Bombay uh, product, uh, both B-Tech and M-Tech, that too in electrical engineering. Yes, sir. Am I uh, right and uh, no problem? Yes, sir. Right. So, uh, first of all, let me compliment you that you have mentioned Sindhi as your mother tongue. There is a lot of Hindiization going on in India. Uh, virtually every Hindu should declare Hindi as a mother tongue is a moment. It is a UP based. But fortunately, you have not fallen a prey. Even though your father's origins, at least as far as uh, his generation is concerned, is Bhopal. Yes, sir. Otherwise, all of you are from either Hyderabad, Sindh, or Karachi, or one of those areas. Sindhis yes. are from Sindh. Yes, sir. Good. So, who migrated? Your great grandfather or grandfather? Uh, my uh, my great grandfather migrated, but my grandfather was uh, a, a small child at that time. He was about ten sure. years old. And on my mother's so, side, also uh, they migrated. Both. So bo both of them own about 10,000 acres before partition? Uh, no, sir. Uh, my <laughs> mother's side, uh, my great-grandparents on my mother's side owned land, but not on my father's side. Okay. One of the grouses of Pakistani is against uh, Sindhis. By Sindhis, we mean uh, mm -hmm. Hindus, not, uh, not Bhuttos and others. Bhuttos are also Sindhis, yes, but they are Muslims. Yeah. Their grouse before partition was that all landlords were Hindus and all labor were Muslims. So that was their big grouse. Anyway, I don't know whether there are any Hindus left in Sindhu. Sin, I'm sorry, Sindh area. Uh, but that's uh, bygones be bygone. Okay, we'll move on. So you have completed in 2017 your M.Tech or uh, B.Tech. Which one did you complete? Sir, uh... Into so mine was a dual degree program. So I finished, oh. uh, I got both the degrees in 2017. 2017. After that, what has been your journey? Yes, sir. Uh, so for two years after college, I worked at uh, Xerox Research Center India uh, as a research engineer in their machine learning and optimization group. In October, uh, between October and November 2019, I quit my job. And since then, I'm preparing for civil services examination full time. Okay, okay. Very good. Your option is mathematics. Yes, sir. Dar lagta ya. Many, many engineers take some anthropology, some sociology, or uh, even public administration, or political science and international relations. But they are not very comfortable with mathematics. How come you are comfortable with mathematics? What has gone wrong with engineering and IIT? Sir, uh... Firstly, I have been comfortable with mathematics since the childhood only. And uh, secondly, sir, uh, in the syllabus of UPSC, in paper one, there is a lot of overlap between paper one of mathematics and what we studied in electrical engineering at college. So uh, that was also one of the reasons why I uh, took mathematics. Mm, anyway, I think uh, the other uh, engineer that, in fact, uh, Nine out of ten people that we have been interviewing, and you are the, I think, 202nd candidate or so in the last 40 days. So they are all engineers. And invariably, except three or four people, you are probably the fifth person. They do not opt for mathematics. They opt for only uh, some, um, some subject they say they suddenly got interested in. These are all a uh, bunch of lies. They got scared of mathematics is the reason, I presume. But anyway, since you are not scared, and genetically, Sindhis are the greatest businessmen on earth. So uh, I'm sure they have they are, they are comfortable with numbers, if not with algebra. So that's it then. I have nothing more to say. I will hand you over to the former chief secretary of Telangana State, Dr. M.G. Gopal. Yes. He will ask you a few relevant questions. And after that, uh, three more panel members. After that, I again will come back. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, then, Dr. Gopalgar. Yes, sir. Yes. So, Mr. Kush Motwani, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Good. Uh, actually, you have left a very cushy job. Yes, sir. And you should have been cush with that cushy job. Yes, Instead sir. of that, you are trying to venture into civil services. 
Yes, sir. So what is the attraction? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I, I, I was pushed with the job. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, but uh, firstly, uh, during the job, I was working on uh, projects related to public service delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, but for mainly clients based in US and Europe. And I always felt a deep desire throughout my job to work on those problems in an Indian context and to create an ecosystem, uh, to work in an ecosystem on those issues in India. Mm. And uh, sir, secondly, uh, both at college, IIT Bombay, and during my job, I realized uh, that there is a disconnect between uh, industry, academy, and governance in India. And it is more than that in uh, countries such as US. So I think uh, I, I uh, want to become, I uh, started preparing because I, I, I believe that uh, a, civil a civil servant job will give me the opportunities and responsibilities to work on uh, these challenges. Okay, good. Now, there are two models, uh, you know, which have become very conspicuous in uh, India, where, you know, well-qualified uh, people joining IAS and uh, subsequently resigning and getting in private sector and then taking the politics route like the present IT and railway minister, you know, uh, Mr. Vaishnav, Vaishnav, Ashwin Vaishnav. That is one way of uh, doing public service. The other way is that there are some government officers who work for some time in the government and, uh, you know, uh, like uh, uh, Vaishnav. And the other way is lateral entry, which has been commenced by Government of India, where uh, uh, executives with 15 years of experience are allowed to join the government. So between these two options, uh, imagine which would be better in terms of serving the people better, where you can bring uh, you know industry and economic here governance together. Sir, it would depend on the specific uh, role. For example, uh, lateral entry is a very good option for highly specified jobs wherein a person uh, can come in for three years mm -hmm. and uh, he can create a framework around that issue for a certain period of time uh, related to policy, related to uh, how, how that uh, thing should be structured. For example, uh, there's a lot of recent advancements taking place in technology and government uh, will not necessarily have the necessary expertise. So in, in these domains, lateral entry can be very helpful. Uh, but uh, in terms of creating impact with respect to some uh, more generic issues, uh, uh, such as railways, uh, the route taken by uh, uh, the railways minister, uh, Vaishnav sir, is probably uh, the, the better way, the objective is to do public service. Okay. Now, considering the fact that uh, there is a lot of criticism, you know, these days about uh, uh, disinvestment and privatization, and the route that the government proposes to take, you know, in this direction. And the fact that those who work in private sector and try to get into through lateral entry also would like to push uh, the, you know, privatization processes forward. Now, uh, don't you think uh, that the checks and balances, you know, between the political executive and uh, the executive, uh, the services, you know, these checks and balances uh, system would go away soon? Sir, uh, I, uh, I don't think that uh, that will happen. Uh, we, we, uh, the responsibility should be to ensure that we have a strong uh, supervision and regulatory structure, such as uh, by RBI or by SEBI. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, banks have been privatized, but uh, that has not weakened any sort of regulation or supervision by RBI. In fact, successive steps that have been taken have only strengthened RBI's uh, supervision capabilities. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, yes, we need to ensure that uh, conflict of interest is not there when people coming in via lateral entry push in for privatization. So that should not lead to any kind of conflict of interest because that will uh, be harmful to checks and balances. But uh, but yes, uh, having independent regulate if, if we have independent regulators, then I don't think that will be a problem. Uh... Who appoints uh, the Reserve Bank of India's governor and is he independent or not? Yes, sir. Sir, the governor of uh, Reserve Bank of India is headed, is uh, appointed by, uh, is, uh, is selected by a financial uh, sector's appointment committee that is headed, headed by the cabinet secretary. Uh, 
and uh, they recommend the name to the uh, finance ministry and the final appointment is done by uh, department of economic affairs uh, is the prime minister yes sir ultimately uh, the decision is taken by the prime minister final appointment is made made by the prime minister yes sir. Uh, who do you think the the so called the regulator regulators we yes. say electricity regulatory commissioner erc chairman who yes. do you think he, he is appointed by yes sir uh, sir uh, electricity they are also I, I am not aware of this that process by which electricity regulatory commissioners commissioners are appointed mm. but uh, there are gaps in the electricity regulation process uh, i will what about the chief election commissioner who is appoint who appoints the chief election commissioner so the chief election commissioner is appointed by the president to yeah but on the recommendation of uh, of uh, who the political yes. executive yes sir whether it is written or unwritten so therefore what i am trying to find out is yes, you know when the service provider and the regulator are really different yes sir and the regulator is also appointed by the one who appoints the service provider don't do you really think that uh, you know the separation of regulation and the service provision would really help in proper regulation keep you in mind the electricity regulation in mumbai for instance its distribution is privatized is it really well regulated in the sense that you have a facility to switch over from one supplier to the other yes sir uh, sir in mumbai there are three discoms uh, one is uh, tata one is adani and one is a state owned discom bst uh, we do not have that freedom to switch over the providers yet uh, but uh, with the new rules that provision is going to uh but sir i would say that when uh the i would again uh, try to go back to the example of banks to answer the question when the banks are privatized and there is a free market mm. uh the regulator is respective of who appoints the regulator their job uh they really return uh, with respect to uh supervision and with respect to setting uh, say bank rates uh, repo rates and so on mm. and uh, that does create an effective regulatory mechanism uh, no but uh, see you are referring to bank rate and repo rate which are instruments of monetary policy yes, which look at uh, you know containing kind of inflation and keep it within reasonable limits as decided but look at the pmc bank and look at the s yes bank and you know in spite of rbi being the regulator what happened yes. to them yes sir uh, in pmc bank sir that is a multi state cooperative bank so recently only rbi is regulatory powers over multi state cooperatives has been strengthened uh, in yes banks sir there have been gaps uh, mm. but uh, it is only through mistakes that uh, the system improves and uh, as far as uh, the system is concerned in the 1960s 70s and 80s uh, when uh, there were much more uh, such problems even before nationalization and post nationalization so i would say that as far as banking is concerned uh, the system has worked out well and it will continue to work out well okay good so we have to learn lessons while working with the new initiatives and inventions all right good tell me the salient features of the uh, new draft electricity policy of government of india why are some states resisting yes sir uh, sir uh, the new uh, the new draft uh, so there was there was a set of rules last year and the new draft uh, act follows upon the rules mm. so the one of the first provisions is to reduce the licensing criteria for new discoms mm. uh, the second element is with respect to uh, operational aspects of sharing the distribution infrastructure among any new entrants into the discom space mm. uh, uh, th these are uh, some of the provisions i'm not able to recollect the other ones mm. uh, do you think do you think the state governments uh, in some states Yes, uh, or uh, giving free power without charging anything and not bothered about the thefts under the guise of free power. Any idea? Yes, sir. Uh, these problems are there. Uh, that is uh, reflected in the uh, aggregate transmission and commercial losses of the uh, discom state wise. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is an enormous gap. So, for example, in states such as Haryana, it is uh, less than fifteen percent. But in states such as UP, it is greater than thirty percent. So, how does the new uh, draft? Uh, propose to check this kind of you know giving subsidies left right and center and yes. leaving the discoms uh, to be losing the entities yes sir uh, the new draft in it itself does not check on this but this new draft has been accom accompanied by a 3 lakh crore scheme for discoms wherein each and every discom uh, has to submit a plan of how they would reduce their 
ATNC losses to less than 15% by 2024-2025. And uh, they would be, uh, so they have to submit their own plans. Uh, the central government or the state government will not impose any plans on them. And then they will be evaluated against their own plans and funds will be released in a phased manner, subject to whether or not uh, they, they, are, they fulfill the uh, sort of uh, the targets that they themselves had put for themselves. So that is how the uh, plan is to reduce. All right, imagine yourself to be the MD of a discom, a state-run discom, yes. not Tadani's or Tata's or best in yes. Mumbai. Yes. Okay. Now the discom, you are appointed as the MD of discom by the state government. Say you are allotted to Telangana cadre. Yes. You are MD of discom. Yes. Sir. You are appointed by the state government. Yes. And the state government asks you to give free power to the households and also to the agriculturists. Yes. Okay. Now yes. the usual scheme already gave you a lot of money and you wiped out your losses. Yes, sir. Since your balance sheet is good, clear, state government further says give more subsidy and doesn't compensate and there are the operational problems you don't pay to the supplier okay and yes. you have debtors sundry debtors the consumers don't pay to you because there is no direct payment by the consumer and the state government doesn't pay so my question is what does the new policy uh, intend to do to ensure that you don't get into the trap of not getting monies okay for the subsidies given by the government from the state government Sir, uh, there are several steps which uh, it is envisioned that all of them would work together to reduce. So the first part is uh, metered connections everywhere. So the plan is to have 25 crore smart meters by 2024. Uh, this would sort of mesh be uh, put every all data with respect to how much power is consumed where in one platform. The other part is related to upgradation of infrastructure, for example, aerial bundle. I think you are missing the point. It is actually the direct the benefit transfer to be given by the state to the consumers yes. and you will... You know, you will harass the consumers to pay. The question of yes. state coming in between doesn't arise. That is what is aimed at. Okay, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Tell me this: uh, uh, the public-private participations in the country, or uh, you know, in the company where you worked, where you are serving the clients abroad, USA, Europe. Yes. What are the critical success factors to uh, say that the PPP is working well? Yes, sir. Uh, the first would be how the risks are shared between the public sector and the private sector. Mm -hmm. The second would be how the rewards are shared. Okay. The third would be the time period or the concession, uh, the length of the concession agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fourth would be uh, how much uh, percentage of uh, upfront investment which partner is putting in. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, if, if the government is putting in, uh, willing to put in its share upfront, then that has higher parts of uh, making the uh, the thing a success as compared to if it is an annuity model where uh, the thing uh, over a period of time because that will lead to more delays. Now imagine uh, a PPP project like not your uh, your Bombay Metro which got it lots of uh, problems. Yes. Say LNT Metro in Hyderabad. There is yes. no government investment up front. It is a concession for the 20, 30 years or whatever, 35 years may be extendable. Yes. And uh, there's no you know, upfront payment and uh, the through, uh, you know, service charges, uh, the amounts are be recovered through property development, through advertisements, non-fair revenues. So there's no upfront. In typical public-private partnership, there's no governmental investment. Governments, governments are good at giving land at the best yes, sir. and facilitating investment by the private sector. Yes, sir. So where is, the, uh, where is the question of government uh, paying upfront? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, in, in some projects that is there. Uh, okay. For example, okay, you are referring to road uh, hybrid toll road projects. Yes, yes. Okay. 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 What about dispute redressal mechanism? Are there likely to wherever whatever you have seen? If at all you have seen, you can tell. Otherwise, you can say that you are not. Yes, sir, I am not. Aware. All right. All right. All right. Yes, now, what is this FRBM Act? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, FRBM Act is Financial Responsibility and Budget Management Act. Okay, good. It essentially uh, lays down certain guidelines uh, mm -hmm. with respect to a limit, a threshold beyond which the fiscal deficit should, threshold beyond which the total debt stock of the country to GDP should not cross. Okay. Recently, uh, subsequent to the pandemic and uh, the fall in revenues of the state, the central government uh, permitted the states to borrow slightly more than the then prescribed FRBM limit for borrowers. 
subject to achieving some conditions so do you know what are those conditions uh, yes sir uh, sir some of them were related to agricultural reforms some of them were related to one nation implementation of one nation one ration card mm -hmm. uh, i i don't remember the okay, other okay all right all right okay the, you mentioned about agriculture i am happy that you also mentioned being an urbanite from mumbai yes. see why is this uh, crop insurance scheme yes sir you know in india is uh, not really catching up very well or uh, you think it's uh, satisfactory no sir it has uh, not been successful uh, except in one or two states uh, i read that it is successful in karnataka but not anywhere else Hmm. uh some reasons are uh, sir firstly in the first version of the fasal bima yojana okay uh, it was compulsory for farmers who had loans to be a part of the scheme uh but later on they re removed this provision so that led to reduction in participation sir so second is uh state governments are saying that the insurance companies are not releasing the uh, the uh, payment on time and the insurance companies are saying that the state governments are not releasing their share of the premium on time okay Good, so they, good, good, good. Have you heard of bead model of uh, pilot of crop insurance in Maharashtra? Yes, yes sir. Yeah, what is that? So the idea is that uh, if so, bead is an area that is drought prone. So the idea is if the drought comes, then uh, the uh, insurance company will pay up to one hundred and ten percent of the. All right, all right. Oh, I understand. I understand. Before I pass on to my co-panelists, yes, okay, please tell me if at all you are given an authority to introduce. blockchain uh, technology in one area of district administration yes. you are given the freedom in yes. which area as dm would you like to uh, introduce this technology and why sir uh, i would like to introduce it in agricultural supply chain mm. uh, sir uh, why uh, firstly because that will lead to tracing of products secondly it will lead to uh, more transparency with respect to pricing it will help the market determine the price and that will help the uh, farmers get a better price for their produce and thirdly it will justify uh, the premium for certain uh, high quality uh, item okay 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 thank you thank you thank you very much hello kush yes sir yeah. <laughs> is it uh, quite hot humid in mumbai today <laughs> yes sir it's a little humid it is not uh, hot uh, has there been a rain in, uh, in the recent uh, yes sir week it has it rains every day and then after the rain stops it becomes very humid very humid okay no do you experience uh, uh, hot humid uh, weather throughout the year or is it uh, seasonal what happens how do you describe uh, mumbai's weather sir uh, as compared to uh, bangalore uh, it is humid throughout the year Mm -hmm. but uh, i i am used to it so i find it humid only uh, during uh, monsoon i don't i find it pleasant at other times of the year uh, so now you know the come uh, monsoon and then you know urban flooding is quite common in mumbai mm -hmm. yes what do you think it's happening so repeatedly and uh, uh, almost it's an annual feature Okay. Uh, now, are there any measures in place uh, so that you know on a long-term basis you can avoid this? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, why it happens every year? Uh, the first is uh, the city is extremely concretized. Uh, secondly, a lot of the city is built on reclaimed land, so that is why the uh, water. Uh, withdrawal capacity has become lesser and lesser due to more and more reclamation and the third is the river channels the meethi nadi is there it is that channels are all uh, full of construction uh, so and uh, there's a lot of siltation in the in the uh, uh, bottom of the river so the capacity is limited and uh, so the fourth reason is uh, bmc undertakes cleaning activity of all the drains every year but uh, within 15 days do those drains get filled up again because uh, of less waste processing so uh, that that will also help uh, to solve i think uh, these things should be targeted the first is 100% waste processing so swachh bharat urban mission ka implementation will help 
the second is uh, during high tide there are problems in some two or three areas such as gandhi market so there uh, there are proposals to construct underground tanks to hold excess water for a period of 6 hours during high tide so that will also help Mm. Uh, is there any time frame to execute all the things so that the Mumbai becomes relatively safer during, or is it uh, a work in progress for eternity? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, sir, Swachh Bharat Urban Mission has a time frame. Uh, the idea is to finish to achieve hundred uh, percent wastewater and solid waste recycling by twenty twenty five. But uh, yeah, other yeah. projects, yes, that will take time. Push uh, Maharashtra is uh, known for you know very successful cooperatives. Yes, sir. And uh, I just heard you talk about uh, urban cooperatives, urban finance, you know, cooperative banks. So we had some discussion on banking finances and all that. Now in this context, <clears throat> apart from uh, Urban finance cooperatives. Maharashtra is also known for a lot of agricultural uh, cooperatives, like you know, the Shri Rajesh movement. Uh, yes. Sir. And then, uh, in recent times, for some reason, you know, these cooperatives uh, have been in the news. And then, uh, a new ministry has also come up in the union government. But then, in, in the so initiative is not received. Uh, you know, Kindly, and uh, people in particularly states have lots of apprehensions. Uh, they look at it as you know centers over which. Uh, why do you think uh, that perception has crept in? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, the perception, the state's concerns is that uh, firstly, cooperatives are a state subject. uh secondly agri most cooperative deals with agriculture or local produce which again are state subjects so the states feel that the center should have no role interfering in these matters and uh, sir thirdly in states such as uh, maharashtra or uh, gujarat or other states where cooperatives are successful it also linked to the politics of that state so uh, there is a third political reason wherein the apprehension is that uh, a central ministry will sort of interfere try Will be used to interfere in the uh, state uh, politics or something, something like that. No, but uh, that be the case, then uh, what the new ministry should be doing now, uh, sir? What the new ministry should ideally be doing is to uh, ensure that cooperatives can compete with uh, private sector firms today. Mm -hmm. uh secondly it should be making it easier for cooperatives to find markets to brand their products and to uh, expand to other states and not just to other states to export their produce so th these should be the two main uh, uh, agenda items for the new ministry the constitution amendment also came in for uh, scrutiny and uh, the supreme court also had uh, settled the issue are you aware of that issue yes sir uh This is uh, recent. Uh, the ninety-seventh mm -hmm. constitutional amendment that okay. the court struck down recently. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what is its significance? What did it say finally? Sir, I I don't know in detail about okay. that case. Uh, it partly appealed the amendment and partly found fault with the entire process of amendment. Yes, sir. And um, it's a you know actually in a sense a mixed. Uh, Judgment in the sense, it partly upheld the amendment and partly found fault with the whole process of uh, amendment. Uh, in a way, it uh, supported uh, states, you know, autonomy, and uh, also at the same time um, upheld, uh, you know, interstate uh, cooperatives where uh, the union will have say. Yes, so sir. it's uh, you know both win-win. Part win for the states and part win for the union. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, now tell me, mm -hmm. as an urbanite, uh, I'm sure you must be ordering food over your mobile. Yes, yes sir. Now, uh, you know the so-called uh, delivery of Swiggy, Swiggy, Zomato, and all that. So these are all online platforms, and uh, today. 
gig economy is here right yes sir and uh, there are also lots of issues and challenges uh, in, you know, in this particular sector yes. and then uh, there are also you know people working in this sector uh, are also facing uh, quite a lot of uh, problems hmm. so what is this platform all about and uh, is there a need for the government to step in and uh, any legal framework is in order uh, sir uh, could you repeat the last yeah, yeah. part of yeah. the question I yeah have... any legal framework yes sir is warranted okay yes sir. either to regulate or take care of uh, you know the social security part of it yes sir Uh, sir there are uh, two aspects to this uh, mm -hmm. one is uh, these new platforms are two sided markets where uh, demand and supply both on both sides affect uh, both the sides uh, so there is a need to regulate uh, two sided markets with respect to whether or not the platform can take part in the business so for example uh, that has been a problem in e-commerce where amazon sells via its own uh, affiliates but uh, that is a similar problem that is happening in other uh, platforms also including zomato and swiggy where zomato and swiggy have are started promoting starting to promote their own restaurants so that is something that needs regulation the platform should remain a platform it should remain a bridge between the buyers and the sellers okay. uh, so secondly uh, on the other hand with respect to uh, the labor uh, there are concerns uh, the concerns are that there is no transparency with respect to hiring or firing they are not permanent employees they are treated as contractual laborers and they don't get social security benefits so the new labor codes uh, have sort of addressed this by making uh, social security a universal uh, criteria for all employers mm -hmm. uh, that will help uh, in in the second part but it will not help in the first part no are there any you know remedies grievance redressal mechanisms or remedies available to these people Or are they merely at the mercy of the employers, <clears throat> sir? Uh, sir, I think it depends on. Uh, there is no legal remedy or grievance redressal available. Mm. Uh, is anything in the offing to you know protect their service conditions and uh, give them a sense of security of job, or uh, arbitrarily you know, protect them against the arbitrariness of uh, the employer? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, the new labor code on social security that mandates that they should get social security, but it does not do something about uh, job security. It only uh, mandates that uh, during the time they are contracted with the firm, they sh they should be available. Uh, they should be able to avail the benefits of social security as other employees. But uh, there are no guarantees on security or anything. What do you see the potential of uh, you know this particular sector of economy? as a contributor to overall gdp hmm. so the potential is uh, very big because uh, the potential in terms of contribution to gdp is also big and the potential in terms of job creation is also big hmm. because uh, oh, yeah. push you have to come back so, uh, push you have to come back hello push hello. you have to come back Uh, there was some disruption. He lost your voice. Yeah, poor connectivity. Which? Ah, am, uh, am I audible and visible? Visible, no. Audible, yes. Hello. Audible also not really very clear. Am Am I? audible and visible no you are visible but hello 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 yeah push you are you are visible I, but you are uh, there is a lag there, but please try audio audio is a problem okay uh, yeah. should i try uh, a, 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 Okay, okay. You you try. Can I can I get one? Yes, sir. You, would you like to switch out to some new device or something? Yes, sir. Can I get? 
it a half a minute to check the internet connection or to switch oh, okay do that do that better i think not able to hear you properly yeah. thank you yeah yeah we were talking about gig economy its potential uh, contribution to you know gdp and uh, how do you see you know it uh, uh, playing out uh, sir uh, with respect to e-commerce uh, the uh, projections are that it will reach about 300 billion 400 billion in the next 5 years mm -hmm. and uh, gig economy as a whole uh, all sorts of such platforms will will might even reach some 600 billion something like that which is around uh, 10 to 15% of gdp in the next 5 years mm -hmm. now today's uh, you know newspaper uh, also reports that in the context of the pandemic there has been a lot of uh, you know migration of workers from place to place place of origin to place of you know employment and and in the in the process they have undergone a lot of you know difficulties and then uh, the parliamentary standing committee had submitted its uh, committee on labor had submitted its report now are you aware of the recommendations made by this committee and also the government's initiatives in general apart from the committee's recommendations Sir, I'm not aware. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not aware of the recommendations of the committee. Okay, but uh, I'm aware of some of the initiatives. Yeah. Okay, tell me what are they? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, one is uh, the One Nation One Ration Card initiative. The idea is to ensure that uh, ration can be availed at a respective location. Okay. Another is uh, creating a national database of migrant workers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, third is related to skill uh, skill databases, but uh, that is uh, that is presently not a national level. That is, uh, some states with the help in coordination with the labor ministry have taken up this. So these are uh, things. That, it is actually supposed to be the database is supposed to be created right from you know uh, village level. Yes, sir. From panchayat level upwards, bottom up upwards. Okay, yeah. okay. Go on. Uh, sir, uh, is that all the government is uh, trying to do, or is there anything more? Than that? Sir, uh, there is one more uh, provision uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, related to the new labor codes only. So, mm -hmm. uh, one of the new labor codes that uh, subsumes the earlier interstate migrant workers act, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, it does not change anything per se in the new labor. Uh, except have you have you heard of job stamps? Uh, what are job stamps? Uh, sir, I've heard of it, but uh, I am not sure. Uh, okay. Sir, I think the idea is that uh, some people are promised to come to uh, urban areas with the promise of jobs, and mm -hmm. then uh, they're not uh, given any. They're not given the jobs that they were promised, but uh, they're sort of employed into some other activities. Oh no! no, no. <laughs> okay, I think you're just making a wild guess, <laughs> going by the etymology. Okay. Anyway, we'll come come back to it later. Now, I also find that you have done some basic mountaineering in Manali and all that. What prompted you to take to mountains? Uh, sir, and uh, did you visit uh, uh, the Western Ghats? Where were you during this yes. you know, uh, uh, training or uh, do you, while doing the course? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I took up the course after the first year of college uh, mm -hmm. because uh, some of my friends were taking it up. Uh, so that was that is that was the reason why I took it up. But I enjoyed it a lot. And after that, I have uh, been to uh, many other uh, treks in the Western Ghats mm -hmm. as well as near Bangalore when I was working. Are you aware of the you know uh, eco report on uh, Western Ghats? The ecological, the ecological degradation and uh, the need for its preservation. Yes, sir. Studies were made. There was also a committee. Are you, so the, what are the recommendations of Western Guards? Yes, sir. So the first committee was the Gutkill Committee. Mm -hmm. And after that was the Kasturi Rangan Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gutkill Committee recommendation was that uh, the entire uh, region of Western Ghats across the six states should be declared an eco-sensitive area. Uh, the Kasturi Rangan Committee, they demarcated the region into uh, several uh, smaller ec ecologically sensitive areas. 
and they said that some of these should be in some of these uh, activities such as mining and construction should be prohibited okay. whereas in others they can continue there is always a conflict between you know the economic development and the ecological concerns uh, now uh, how do we really balance between those two yes sir uh, sir uh, in in some cases it is not always possible to balance for example uh, in case of mining uh, mining activities are going to lead to environmental damage but mining activities are also necessary so in in these cases the only idea to mitigate should be afforestation to ensure that uh, the loss is minimized but uh, in some other activities it is possible to uh, sort of make sure that uh, they are not conflicting for example construction activities okay. is possible to adopt uh, construction techniques which are not harmful or tourism it is possible to adopt eco tourism measures good, good, good. that's it okay. so finally to uh, conclude from my side uh, let me just uh, find out from you since you did some uh, course in mountaineering How do you distinguish yes. between a mountain and a hill, uh, sir? Uh, it is, sir. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, can I can I can I guess? I, I, yeah, I, you I, take I, take a guess. It, it is. It should be on the basis of height. So, uh, I there there will be a certain threshold beyond below which it is called a hill. So, it is probably oh, exactly. yeah. thousand. That's interesting. That's okay. Fine. Thank you, sir. It's okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Krish Matwani. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So, good news is from your state that uh, Dola Vida is recognized as the heritage site, yes, sir. and yes, that sir. is called as the first smart city by some people. Yes, sir. Now, yes, tell sir. us uh, what are the features which uh, really are appreciated in the Dola Vida. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, the uh, most important features related to water management. Good. Uh, sir, the the city is a rectangle between two sort of rivers or channels of two rivers, hmm. and uh, the water from those channels is uh, diverted into a big storage structure. Hmm. There are also head wells in in the city. Hmm. So this is uh, this is one of the best things I think that okay. urban city today can also learn from this. Okay. Any other features? Sir, apart from this, uh, the city is uh, is different from other Indus Valley cities. Other Indus Valley cities have two heights. One is a citadel and one is the ground. But this has three heights. Mm. One is a upper town, one is a middle town, and one is a lower town. Okay. Uh, there are gaps between these, so it is it is said that those gaps are for uh, celebration of events or something like that. Uh, mm. So sort of planned uh, nicely. So it has got the sign board. So that's a very new feature compared to other yes, Indus Valley cities. Yeah. Yes, sir. It also uh, has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Kush, uh, uh, what we observed is that in Gujarat, even today, the water is a bigger issue, and yes, the, the Gujarat government has taken special care for the water management. So, new projects yes, yes. were brought. So, are aware of these new projects by the government of Gujarat? Sir, no, sir. I I am not aware of any uh, projects related to water in Gujarat. Okay, okay, nice. <clears throat> uh, coming to Gujarat again. Yes. So sir. we got the statues. So world's tallest statue, Statue yes, of Unity. Yes. So there are uh, issues regarding this. So what exactly is your impression of this statue? Should we go for more uh, uh, statues like this? Or what is your view? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, my view is that it is. I see it as a project which will uh, firstly it will help. It is a. Symbol of uh, more important. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Again, please go back to the answer. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, firstly, I see it as an infrastructure project, 
Hmm. Uh, it is obviously a statue of uh, uh, appreciation for our national heroes, uh, national leaders for independence. Okay. Okay. But apart from that, it, it is it can become a huge tourism asset for the state hmm. uh, and for the country as a whole uh, because it has been uh, designed in a way wherein there are a lot of new features that are not there in tourism anywhere else in the country, hmm. such as a sea plane from Abarmati Riverfront to Statue of Unity is the first. Time it is there in the country, mm. and there are eco tourism features. Okay. Uh, so, uh, with respect to future projects, whether or not we should go ahead with it, that should be done after a detailed cost benefit analysis. For example, yeah. uh, there is a similar project uh, of the coast of Mumbai, the Chhatrapati Shivaji statue. Mm. So that is also a similar. Project. Yeah, uh, Mr. Kush, what we observed is that uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Yes. Sir. Uh, he has brought many changes in the administration. And in fact, he stood for the unity of the country and the unit of the civil services also. Yes. So yes. can you throw some light on the contribution made by uh, Sardar Vallabhai Patel for administration? Uh, sir, uh, I'm, uh, I have uh, limited, uh, I, I only, I'm only aware of what I've read in the uh, history textbooks. Okay. The first is uh, there was a debate in the Constituent Assembly with respect to the status of the civil services post independence. Hmm. So, uh, Sardar Patel argued that uh, they're independent and they can uh, be a foundation for the nation of the future and hmm. they should have constitutional provisions. Okay. Uh, secondly, uh, they he, he also addressed uh, civil servants uh, training and he tried to ensure that uh, they 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 work for the welfare of the country. But, uh, so, what are the principles he has emphasized for the civil services? Uh, sir, I am not aware of principles. Yeah. Principles. Okay. Just now you uh, asked uh, you discussed on the governance. Yes, sir. Okay. What exactly is the governance? Sir, uh, governance is the process uh, by by which the government uh, delivers its roles and. Functions. Mm -hmm. So there is a concept called the good governance and ethical governance. How can we distinguish between these two? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so good governance has uh, certain, uh, the, the idea of good governance is it should be transparent, it should be accountable, it should mm -hmm. be participatory, it should lead to inclusive growth, mm -hmm. and it should be efficient, it should not be wasteful. Yes. And uh, the idea of ethical governance is that uh, the laws that are used as tools by the governance. They should be in line with the ethics of society. So, uh, okay. How to link between these two? Good governance and ethical governance. Uh, sir, uh, sir. One thing I can think of is uh, whenever any new legislation that is being passed by the government, hmm. uh, they should. Uh, it should. Uh, they should seek to ensure that it has public support. So mm. it should be accepted by the society and only then it should become a law. So that is also in lines with the principle of democracy. Okay. Uh, coming to the Delhi, so there is one uh, construction called the Central Vista project. Yes, sir. So what is your view on this project? Uh, sir, uh, Sir, it is, it is going to lead to a construction of a new parliament that is going to be adjacent to an old, or the old parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, the advantages are uh, that uh, it, it will be uh, more, it will be a disaster resilient construction. It mm -hmm. will have more space and it will be more uh, efficient with respect to the old uh, setup. Mm -hmm. The third is, it is a part of a larger project of the development of the entire uh, region, the entire Vista. Okay. And that will transport costs for bureaucrats and that will ensure that work gets done in a faster way because everyone will be close to each other. Okay. Uh, the disadvantage is, is that uh, it is very costly and it is it is leading to a lot of cutting of trees. Mm. So what is the view? So one side you say development, the other side it is now going to uh, create the, the destroy this ecological aspects. Yes, sir. Uh, now, suppose if you, uh, you have to take a stand as to whether we must go forward or not, what yes, stand yes. you are going to take in the, in the circumstances? Uh, my stand is going to be that if a project has been approved, then it should not be delayed. 
uh, but at the same time the ecological aspect should not be compromised uh, this can be done by ensuring afforestation in a similar area uh, mm. uh, in an adjacent uh, piece of land or in a disconnected piece of land wherever it is possible but uh, mm. the timelines of both the things should be interlinked uh, it is it is not enough just to finish the project on time it is also important to ensure that the afforestation activities are done on time okay uh, so you are interested for this population modeling what is this population modeling uh, yes sir uh, sir that is a part of a project that i was started at alas working mm. so the idea was to uh, the objective of the project was to predict the prevalence of diabetes for each and every zip code in for each and every county in the us mm. so each county uh, denoted by zip code so uh, for that the approach that we used was we used uh, the census data of us and we used mm. certain other uh, consumption data and bio indicator data okay uh, national level us surveys to model the entire population mm. and then, uh, try and predict uh, the prevalence for the population in each and every county okay yes. so mr push we are now just uh, paying the bill just proposed by the uttar pradesh government now yes. what exactly is population bill and the what are its impact uh, what is what is its impact on the issue of population yes sir uh, sir uh, the population uh, control uh, bill introduced by in up it aims to reduce the tfr mm. to below replacement level uh, by 2030 Uh, by 2025, and mm. uh, ensure that the population is stable at a level. Uh, sir, uh, the uh, the the issue is that uh, the concerns are that it has it is it is uh, it is targeting certain geographies of the state and it is targeting certain communities of the state. So mm. that is the concern on the bill. Mm. Do you find it has got any impact on this gender uh, aspect? Yes, sir. Uh, sir uh, the impact on gender aspect will be that uh, something like so there are a lot of unsafe abortions in the country mm. and it might lead to further unsafe abortions uh, the second is uh, it might also lead to more uh, sex selective uh, abortions so it might lead to more uh, sort of phenomena of uh, uh, sun meta preference or it might impact the sex ratio even more Mm. So there are two facets of that. Okay, okay. that's uh, the freedom of press. So this is one of the very important aspects, and of course, you are also related as the editorial board member of of Insight. Yes, sir. So in this respect, uh, Mr. Kush, tell us whether the press in India is free today. Uh, so the press in India is free. it cannot be uh, denied that there are uh, conflicts of interest with respect to uh, ownership of the press bodies and with respect to connect connections between uh, press bodies and various pressure groups mm. or various political parties mm. but uh, considering uh, for this fact it is free and by and large uh, from from the newspapers that i read uh, in uh, the press is largely free to report on the issues in the way that they see they, they see fit but we, when we see uh, ten years ago and now i think press is now almost uh, it is uh, throttled it is not uh, as free as it used to be I have observed that sir uh, i am not uh, very aware of how it was 10 years ago uh, sir what i can uh, recollect is 10 years ago i used to watch tv and the tv debates used to be of high quality but now the tv uh, news debates are not very informative <laughs> but uh, newspapers i think uh, are uh, for example i read the indian express so mm. uh, from the indian express i have never felt that press is not free okay uh so what we observed is that maths india has yes, kind of, um, produced finest mathematicians so tell us what is the contribution of our mathematicians in the ancient india yes sir sir uh, in the ancient india uh, there are two two periods one is uh, in the post vedic ages mm. so there we had mathematicians such as bodhyan who gave the pythagoras theorem 
mm. and uh, people uh, who 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 gave the binary zeros and ones mm. uh, in after the mauryan age uh, we had mathematicians this is aryabhat who introduced uh, the number system and who gave contributions to number theory mm. and also had mathematicians such as uh, brahma gupta and bhaskar acharya Hmm. who sort of uh, helped in uh, made advancements in algebra with respect to how to calculate the roots of a quadratic equation and also hmm. hmm. these are some contributions okay finally you are from walsad how uh, what is the origin of this word sir uh, i am not aware sorry sir it's okay mr kush uh, over to sri shobhshekhar ji yes sir Yeah, okay, so uh, it's nice talking to you, Mr. Kush. So, yeah. what to from second? Thank you, sir. Yeah, very good morning, uh, Kush Mathwani. Good morning, uh, Kush. So, uh, how is the weather in Bombay? Yes, sir. Uh, it is. It is humid and it is. Uh, it it is. It is raining intermittently. So it, it was raining in the morning and now it's very humid. And how is the transportation from one place to another? Trains, uh, buses, or the all. resume sir uh, buses have resumed uh, they are operating at a lesser frequency uh, i uh, for example i used an nmmt bus few days back uh, so buses have re- resumed but trains have not completely resumed and trains uh, local trains are not completely open to everyone and they are also operating at a little uh, certain timings uh, but road yeah. road traffic is started again Okay, you know you are living in Mumbai and uh, you know belong to Gujarat. You know one of the most uh, uh, ambitious projects announced uh, a few years ago in terms of connectivity and transportation was the bullet train. Yes, sir. Okay. Now very recently the new energetic uh, minister for railways and IT uh, yes, he sir. reviewed it. You know, can you tell me what is the status of uh, this project? How do you view this? Uh, what is the progress who is implementing yes sir uh, so the status of this project is uh, it is primarily in the stages of land acquisition in maharashtra in gujarat a lot of land acquisition has been done and uh, tenders for certain parts of the track and train sets uh, have, have have been st- have, are are starting to be given out so they'll probably be given out in this year or the next year the initial uh, deadline was to completed by 2024 2025 but now it is 2027 28 so it, it has been delayed uh, sir i think that it will be a great project uh, and uh, we should try to ensure that it 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 is finished as soon as possible it, it will have a lot and it will have lots and lots of advantages but why is there delay you know is it lack of uh, funds or is it uh, you know any other issue environment issue or you know or the uh, japanese not uh, Showing keen interest. What is the problem now, uh, sir? Uh, the problem started with respect to issues related to land acquisition. Uh, because land acquisition got delayed, uh, the interest from uh, the JICA Japanese Investment Corporation uh, that also sort of started to reduce. And uh, there have been some concerns around environment, but. There was an environment impact assessment done, so I think those concerns were dealt. But most of the land, you know, falls in Gujarat, and the Prime Minister's uh, pet project is uh, the bullet train. So there should have we expected acceleration in that uh, area, isn't it? Yes, sir. Sir, in Gujarat, yes, sir. That is probably why, because of more political push in Gujarat, that is why most of the land acquisition is complete. Uh, in okay. Maharashtra, some of it is still left. Okay. So, no. is it too expensive, or is it economical? You know, or can you recall what uh, Mr. E. Sridharan, the metro man, said about this project? So the cost of the project is around one point zero five lakh crores. So, I personally do not think that is very expensive because uh, infrastructure projects cost a similar amount. Uh, for example, a uh, high roadway, a uh, highway is being constructed from. a uh, mumbai to ali bag that is south of mumbai that is around 40000 crores uh, and uh, it okay. and this is but i do not know what the ishri dharan sir has said about this project okay now you know the motwani is in a way you know associated with the business yes, and sir. you know 
entrepreneurship companies and so on you know in pune there is one motwani um, she started uh, she is a second generation uh, entrepreneur who started a company in uh, green energy uh, evs electric vehicle and mobility space uh, have you heard of uh, her and uh, also uh, how do you look at um, electric vehicles you know in india the uh, acceleration shortcomings you know can you give me a uh, round up in 2 minutes yes sir um, sir firstly i'm sorry sir i have not heard of uh, the uh, pune based company uh, no, no problem yeah but electric vehicles you can tell me you know the yes, issues and uh, development yes sir uh, sir india is uh, said to be the next big market where ev adoption will accelerate uh sir the need is because of several reasons first is less greenhouse gas emissions second is the dependence on our crude oil imports so this will help in forex the third is pollution levels in our major cities and the fourth uh reason for the need is a push to gdp because automobiles are an important part of our gdp contribution uh the uh, the steps that have been taken that are helping is uh, the fame scheme uh, faster adoption of mobility Uh, and the subsidy to two two wheelers, and uh, this is helping. Apart from that, uh, the new policy also involves setting up of charging stations on every twenty five kilometers of the national highways. Apart from that, a lot of steps are also being taken by the private sector, such as Tata, such as uh, now Ola has started its own factory, and they are going to be setting up charging stations. Uh, the challenges are uh, firstly uh, EV adoption because. electric vehicles consumption depends on range so there's a phenomenon called range anxiety so charging stations will have to be several uh, the second is uh, the temperature in india is higher as compared to the western countries or china and that is going to lead to a lesser battery life cycle of the lithium ion batteries so we need to invest in research and development uh, to ensure that uh, ev adoption does not become a problem because of high cost of the batteries and uh, these are yeah, do the, you find uh, any major issues improvement in, in uh, battery technology so that you know um, as you said the limitation of uh, a charge you know running the vehicle for a longer yes. distance uh, you know battery life is improved or you know battery swapping can be done you know so that you don't yes, uh, need to wait for a longer time yes have sir. you heard of any such developments in india okay. yes sir uh, sir uh, the first is uh, sir as you said battery swapping is an option but uh, it is considered to be uneconomical because it is very inventory intensive so the charging stations would have to maintain a very high inventory to be able to swap batteries and uh, that is why it is uh, considered to be uneconomical for a large country such as india uh, on research on battery technologies there have been uh, aluminium based batteries and carbon graphene based batteries uh, even isc bangalore is researching on some of these okay yeah. of these yeah, that's, that's fine yeah yes. now you know you uh, have also done this work on population modeling system yes. you know and diabetes uh, um, can you tell me you know what is this patent pending patent uh, you applied in india or us have you got a patent for that so the patent has been published we haven't uh, gotten it yet uh, the hearing will come up in maybe one or two years uh, we applied it in us hmm. so but in the us yes, if you apply for a patent uh, they will give you a patent pending you know still six months or so they will give time for any challenge and if there any challenge then yes. it will be review otherwise they will automatically get a patent isn't it yes sir so uh, it takes about one year to get published so ours has been published okay. now uh, it is open to challenges and then there will be a review stage after which it will be about oh. no what are the advantages of patent and, uh, you know india is not very high on patenting if you look at the research organizations companies they don't patent a lot whereas if you look at uh, these electronics uh, companies from south asia you know asia the koreans uh, samsung lg you know, heavily patent uh, in india uh, is it good to have patents and commercialize them if they don't commercial what happens at some time uh, the dr ari mashelkar 
He used to say, uh, patent and then pray. So that was a mood in India. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, patents that do not pay off commercially, but that is a risk that business take because uh, they have to pay a certain amount of money to uh, file for patenting. Uh, sir, but apart from that, I think it is a good thing. They encourage healthy competition between firms and uh, they ensure that uh, the investment that uh, a firm that is putting in, into research and development can get paid off because uh, the time duration for which a patent is, is uh, granted is generally 20 years. So, so it, it actually encourages investment, which is a good thing. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, uh, can, I can you hear, hear you. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, fine. Sir. I know. Yeah. Finally, you know, you know, COVID yes, management. Sir. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. You are not, uh, voice is low. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Am I audible now? Yeah. Okay. You know, finally, yes. you know, the uh, management of, uh, you know, COVID in Mumbai, got a lot of appreciation during the second wave across the country. Yes. But if you look at uh, the numbers uh, in yes. Maharashtra, again, it is growing. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, is it interpreted as uh, beginning of a third wave or uh, is it a continuation of the second wave? Or how is it interpreted now? Okay. Anyway, uh, no, finally, um, the, the management of COVID uh, yes, at Mumbai uh, won a lot of appreciation during April, yes. May, June. But if you look at the numbers, you know, again, Maharashtra, the numbers are climbing, like Kerala, you know, and they're very high. Uh, how do you, or how are experts interpreting this? Is it a continuation of the second wave or uh, the beginning of a third wave? Sir, uh, in my opinion, it is the beginning of uh, the second wave because uh, in Maharashtra, the case loads were extremely high during the second wave. Uh, they reached about 70,000 cases per day. And uh, now it is down to 6,000 cases about per day. So uh, according to me, uh, it is now, uh, it, the numbers are very high in regions such as Kolhapur, uh, Sangli, Satara, the regions near Pune where uh, I, the second wave was came a little later. So I think that uh, in Maharashtra, it is a continuation of the second wave. Uh, in in Navi Mumbai, for example, uh, there has been no noticeable increase in cases in the past few, uh, past month or something, or anything like that. Uh, but uh, but yes, with the pandemic, any sort of uh, complacency now might, might, might lead to it becoming the start of a third wave. So oh, yeah. that is, yeah. is, uh, is based on what I understand. Do you think uh, the uh, health apparatus is uh, adequately geared to meet any challenges better than earlier? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in Maharashtra and in the rest of the country also, there has been an enormous improvement in the apparatus. Uh, for example, uh, the number of ICUs were, uh, were uh, 1,200 in the entire state of Maharashtra before uh, Corona. And now it has increased to more than 8,000. 8, so that is more than a six times increase. A similar upgrade in health infrastructure has happened uh, for other other things. Oh. Also. Okay, Hari. Uh, Kush, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good. Good. Yes, sir. All right, Kush Matwani. We have taken uh, unusually long. It's uh, almost 69 minutes. Yes, Say sir. 70 minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, I suppose you have not been to a UPSC board interview uh, so far, or have you been? No, sir, I have not been to any UPSC. This is your second attempt, and you already came up to the interview stage. Yes, sir. The actual interview would be 
number 1 very brief hardly 25 minutes okay number 2 by the grace of god there won't be any technological failures they will be speaking to you yes. using only the normal natural way of sound waves yes, so you can hear them they can hear you so the kind of problems that you and i faced yes sir today yes sir uh, won't arise yes sir there will be absolute uh, 100% audibility and visibility uh now we'll give you our uh, perception of how you have done yes sir except that this perception is from a different perspective the purpose of the upsc interview is to select among the 2000 and odd candidates the best the top 700 for yes. admission into various civil services whereas the purpose of this particular mock interview is to help you identify the areas where you need to work on especially if the time available before the interview is quite long when is the actual interview for you sir it is on the 6th of september plenty of time that's a little more than a month yes so this kind of an interview will help you yes sir so when we give a perception don't get scared yes sir. it is not a case of evaluation it is a case of while admitting that you have myriad uh, plus points yes sir positives there are a few areas which you need to work on in the next one month yes, that's sir. all yes sir so you are indeed a very handsome fellow well dressed fellow of course uh, coming from a prosperous uh, sindhi family and uh, you certainly will be a very good asset to the indian administrative service no doubt about that thank you sir however <clears throat> there are a few areas so one after the other the panel members will tell you what are the areas you need to work on yes sir uh one is of course uh, you need to read in uh, great detail the judgment delivered by supreme court by a bench of 3 wherein justice chandrachud he felt that the 97th constitutional amendment was not in consonance with the procedure prescribed under article 368 for amending constitutions yes sir and therefore suffers from an infirmity and to that extent that particular amendment in so far as has any effect on the state cooperatives will be null and void yes sir it has been held to be unconstitutional yes sir however in the matter of interstate cooperatives they said that amendment stands yes sir there is a dissenting judgment by justice k m joseph who said if the procedure ab initio is not in consonance with article 368 and was suffering from an infirmity then the entire amendment is unconstitutional that is his but yes. the common point is there was a problem with that amendment yes. in so far as trying to uh frame a law in respect of a subject which is figuring very prominently in the state list yes sir. operatives is still a state list and the government of india admitted that the 97th amendment did not bring it to concurrent list it continues to be in state list what supreme court found fault with was since it is impinging on the jurisdiction of the states to make laws on cooperatives they ought to have the parliament and the government of india ought to have obtained the consent of uh-huh. more than 50% of the states yes sir at least 15 states uh, should have been obtained so that is a procedural infirmity what the government of india will do we are not aware number one this particular amendment is not the present india government's baby it yes, was sir. done in 2011 by upa government yes sir so the nda government may either simply say drop further action and uh, 
announce that the 97th amendment stands cancelled the second pro procedure they may adopt is if they like it now that they have a ministry of cooperation or cooperatives they may now circulate it for the opinion among the 28 states in all probability they will get approval from 15 for the large number of bjp ruled states yes sir so this is a question that might figure and therefore i would urge you to read a little more and be thoroughly prepared yes sir the second point i notice is somehow with all your positive qualities and your handsome looks um you are lacking enthusiasm in your answers you, you, there is you know when you are responding it's more a mechanical and more a being on the guard see a great opening batsman if he goes on getting scared yes. and only blocks the ball then uh, he is not a great pleasure to watch so you will have to be more enthusiastic yes and uh, put some energy into your answers yes sir uh, otherwise i find you very good material and yes, of sir. course i am sure you will enter the ias i have no doubt about it yes, nevertheless i want you to score more than 200 out of 275 yes, in the interview okay yes now i'll hand you over to the remaining members of the panel yes sir and during which time you may feel like asking a few questions yes, or seeking clarifications yes sir you hold on i'll give you an opportunity to ask as many questions as you want and seek as many clarifications as you want after the entire feedback from all the members is over is yes. it okay yes sir now i'll hand you over to the former chief secretary gopal garu yes sir yes thank you sir so mr matwani kush yes, can you hear me yes sir good morning sir yeah good morning good so i fully agree with what the chairman has said yes sir and uh, you are quite handsome but you are looking like a solicitor in the supreme court without your tie you know yes, your sir. coat and shirt it's okay yes. doesn't matter yes sir uh, you are looking more like an advocate than an aspirant for uh, interview for the civil services yes sir so you may consider appropriately you know your dress formalities to be gone ahead with at the time of interview maybe you should wear a tie you look much better okay sir okay yes. right now i agree with the chairman because you have to be more enthusiastic because you are a youngster 27 28 not even 28 yes sir you have to be more dynamic because yes. you are very well educated you had very good exposure you continue to have very good exposure and be very confident because you are doing you have done well okay. i'll tell you one or two you will give you one or two inputs where you should guard yourself otherwise you can you know bombard so to say because yes. you have the good knowledge see you must always try to get the interviewers to your side of uh, strength okay, you are sir. very good in your electricity electricity reforms all yes, right yes, and though agriculture is not uh, you know your core competence you don't come from a rural area but still agriculture you are very strong so yes, you try to drag me into electricity and agriculture and you have done very well yes sir but then i try to put you in a fix by asking questions about macro economics yes sir now your your strength is i i feel i don't know based on what i interacted your strength is not as much as in uh, electricity and uh, agriculture in macro economics yes sir so try to you know play around if there are questions directly on uh, macro economics that is one suggestion yes but sir. agriculture the other things uh, you know is fine perfect electricity reforms yes sir no i am saying this because uh, you know uh, in the context of inspections of reserve bank of india yes sir you know uh, uh, by reserve bank of the bank etc as a regulator yes sir. see the debate can go on and on any answer you give can be challenged okay so therefore you should be on guard unless you have done some research you have some thesis to keep on supporting your arguments yes sir okay that much you have to be uh, cautious yes sir because you know rbi as a regulator actually has done well in uh, say some situations like punjab national bank Yes, sir. Where Nero Modi, uh, Choski, or uh, Choksi, these people try to open a letter of uh, credit, and RBI warned them, you know, in several ways that you should reconcile your letters of credit. How yes. many letters of credit you have given? How many letters of credit have been encashed? Yes, sir. So both have to be reconciled so that given but not encashed, 
but in cash but not given will come to light but yes. bank did not bother because bank if you have to consider bank as a service provider and reserve bank as a regulator the bank was more powerful okay than the regulator and therefore they could uh, play yes sir they didn't follow the advice of reserve bank of india therefore i said in an indian situation if you feel confidently that regulator can is the panacea yes regulator is in the hands of the government itself he is what you have to keep always at the back of your mind before you strongly bat for the regulator yes sir well theoretically it's okay service provider regulator should be different and all that is okay all right yes sir so and your answers about electricity and where the distribution lines to be monetized by giving access to all you know franchises to use all that is very good actually you have very yes. good deep insight so try to take the board into your uh, you know line of thinking yes then the frbm limits increase you said rightly the four conditions one is uh, you know one nation one ration you said the other three yes. are eodb just for your information you can go through eodb reforms yes. EODB. electricity yes. reforms municipal yes. uh, you know urban local bodies reforms yeah. okay just yes. keep that in mind and yes. finally the public private participation don't ever think that the government is good at funding so yes. if you say one of the critical success factors is the way government funds you know higher amount in advance or higher amount later it's actually conceptually well theoretically you may be right technically you may be right because there is something called viability gap funding in a public private partnership project but it is not given up front viability gap funding is given based on achievement of certain milestones yes sir government is never good at funding so you should never bring government funding into picture because government is good at land acquisition you know taking the risk on the land front and getting clearances all these are the government forte yes sir. and investment bringing in management bringing in technology bringing in market surveys all that is private sector forte so these two are married in a good public private participation if you keep this principle at the back of your mind you can answer any question on public private participation otherwise you are quite good and uh, your knowledge levels are very high uh, expect uh, more questions from you know urban areas uh, because you are from bombay studied in bombay you work for a good company getting good salaries you know about lateral entry or vice versa which is the which question i posed you know yes, whether sir. you know you should first get into ias and then get into politics through private sector yes. apply yourself reflect then i am sure you will be able to do well i wish you all the best thank you sir thank you sir which uh, i would come straight to areas where you need to you know read up more yes sir uh, the day's newspaper is a must yes sir okay <laughs> yes sir now today it's reported parliamentary standing committee on labor Uh, um, the migrant labor <coughs> underwent sorry it underwent a lot of uh, you know difficulties during this pandemic so they made uh, recommendations about you know providing um, employment as well as direct uh, benefit transfer okay and then uh, there are also initiatives which of course you came up with but then you know i would strongly advise you against uh, you know making wild guess in the actual interview. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, if you are not really sure, okay, you would have said, sir, job stamps. I heard about it, but I am really not sure what it is. Perhaps you know that would have gone well. Yes, sir. But then uh, you uh, went on guessing some wild guess you made and uh, made a mess of the whole thing. Sorry, sir. sir. <laughs> yeah. so it's an advice actually that you know areas where you are not really very clear. please don't venture into you know while guessing yes sir okay yes sir yeah. you might as well confess yes sir you know i heard it sounds familiar but somehow i have not heard about it or, uh, yes sir okay that would have been a very honest response to the question huh? so these job stamps are something like you know what you have in the european union service voucher schemes it's a kind of uh, <clears throat> a replication you say so particularly those who have lost jobs during the pandemic in urban areas the government would give these job stamps to certain designated um, you know employers yes okay and if someone is in need of a job they would uh, approach them and uh, after doing the job the stamp would be given and the, the um, 
worker wage earner would uh, encash that and uh, the money would directly go to the jandan account yes okay yes yeah uh, apart from this there are also other initiatives that is uh, called you know duet <coughs> direct uh, the, the decentralized urban employment training yes. duet d u e t duet scheme is also in vogue and uh, you could also mention about uh, uh, you know swanidhi pm swanidhi scheme yes okay. uh, so that you know they can set up uh, you know street vendors uh, some stalls and you know start a small micro enterprise yes on their own okay so now uh, the impression that i gain is that um, perhaps you know because of your limited exposure to things outside a metropolitan uh, perhaps uh, you know your uh, knowledge is a bit limited as far as issues relating to uh, villages and uh, labor and things like that okay and also on this issue of gig economy yes, uh, the current initiative of the government is to bring about a code on social security for uh, these gig economy workers okay currently all they have is only benefits no rights yes sir. even those benefits are also not guaranteed benefits yes sir okay okay already you do a certain number of deliveries in a day you will get per delivery so much and all that but you have also seen you know how uber ola people have gone on strike uh, the employer has gone on the promise of giving them you know their uh, commissions isn't it so they don't have all the rights that typically a labor enjoys yes though they have they themselves formed into unions you know to bargain and all that but it did not cut uh, much ice with the employer nor even with the government now today the idea is to you know also protect them give them some kind of a social security and uh, to link uh, you know these people also with the new labor code you know a lot of uh, some 24 and odd uh, different labor codes have been consolidated i'm sure you are aware of that uh, yes, uh, i guess you have also read about that yes sir okay yes. so even these people also will be brought under that social you know the new labor code and what are all the benefits that are extendable to a typical labor would also be ext extended to gig economy workers yes sir. okay so i would advise you to read up and um, uh, and also some basics uh, i guess you need to brush uh, up uh, you know having done mountaineering yes, uh, though you said uh, the criteria should be in terms of uh, the height the actual numbers you could not recollect mm. so it is about <clears throat> so it's about 1000 feet okay and also the geographical features yes sir typically a mountain doesn't uh, you know stand up uh, just like a hill up or a hill yes sir yes okay sir. Uh, it it has it is spread you know typically uh, the topography is spread over a certain area yes sir. that's why you call it mountain ranges yes sir unlike a hill uh, it is not something like a you know a topographical feature that you come across uh, in the normal place and yes. also the height is a decisive factor so these are two things you know that distinguish between a hill and a mountain i thought since you did uh, some basic course in mountaineering i think that is where you should have in the first place started what is a mountain and what is a hill is it anyway these are some of the things that uh, i thought uh, i should tell you uh, maybe apart from uh, brushing up some uh, fundamentals you also need to have your uh, uh, exposure to uh, things uh, other than urban other than metropolitan yes, because india lives in its villages all said and done Yes, and it is all the more important for a public servant to have an intimate knowledge of what india is because india lives in its villages yes sir so something to do with uh, agriculture reform something to do with farm laws okay 
Yes. All those things, I think, uh, it is very, very, and also the social conflicts. Okay, India's social structure, the reservations issues. Yes. I think you have to look beyond, uh, you know, your metropolitan understanding or urban understanding of India. That will be of good help to you in the final interviews. Yes, sir. Okay. If you can focus on these issues, I am sure uh, you will certainly make a good impression on the board and all the best to you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Kush. Yes, sir. Uh, we need enthusiasm in the participants. So that's what uh, we observed that you yes, have sir. to participate. When we start with Dolavera, it's a very uh, heartening feature, but there also you are just a lack of enthusiasm. So you must come up with a lot of animation in your uh, yes. uh, face, in your body language. So this is the first yes. Indian uh, IVC site to get the recognition. Of course, Pakistan, we got other things, but in India, this is the first time. Yes. Okay, so the town planning is an excellent uh, execution in uh, Dolavira. That is called the town planning with the mathematical precision. That is the way how the, the, the entire town was constructed. And of course, the signboard, the first of its kind in the entire uh, Indus Valley civilization we found in this particular place. Yes. You mentioned about the water system. Yes, that's the known for uh, its uh, great feature. And th then we went for the water projects of Gujarat. So there you said uh, you are not aware of that thing. Yes, so as a, I mean, a student and from a, a state where you came from, uh, where this water scarcity is very much there, the water projects taken by the government are yes, very sir. essential. So there are three aspects. WASMO, that's called the Water Sanitation Management Organization. There's at Gandhinagar, that's one project. Other is called Gujarat Green Revolution uh, commission that is called uh, GGRC. The other is about the Narmada pump house at the uh, uh, Danki, Danki area. So very uh, important uh, developments are yes. taking place. So be aware so, of that. Garo, he in the Gujarat, he is not from Gujarat. Huh? He's, uh, he is out and out in Mumbai car. Yeah, but he has given uh, the native places in Mumbai. So, I mean, oh, like, fathers. No, no. Fathers. Yeah. Khaz, khaz, khaz. Fathers is also Bhopal. Prior to that, uh, yeah, father is for Bhopal, sir. But in his uh, this, uh, this uh, death, he has given that a place of birth is uh, Navasa. Oh, place of birth, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thereby we go by that, sir. <laughs> so, you are <laughs> because you have okay, given... you better you, uh, yeah. Kush Matwani. So, now, now that you have uh, loyalty to so many states, oh, you better learn yes. about all of them. <laughs> because yes, your father is from Bhopal, you are from Mumbai, and then you worked in Bengaluru, and uh, but you have given the district Walsad and the state Gujarat. So all the four four states are almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So he learned something about these things, and when he when he has yes. stated that the state is Gujarat, then normally we focus more on the Gujarat place. Yes. Though you may uh, you may be in Mumbai for uh, some time. Or maybe the entire time, but you have given that to uh, deaf. Yes, sir. The impression is that you are from uh, Gujarat. No, he is not from Gujarat, yes. actually. Yeah, yeah. He mentioned yeah. as a native place, that's all. Yes, in the deaf, sir, he has given the details. That is, he studied in primary school, upper primary in Navi, Bombay. Yes, yes sir. So yes. he is a Bombay wala. Bombay wala. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, learn something about uh, Nothing wrong with that. Yes, but I... Kush, are with us? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, mean, yes, sir. So, so there are two issues about the Sardar yes, Vallabha sir. statue mm -hmm. and the Central Vista. Mm -hmm. At the Central Vista, you have given a balanced view. But at Sardar Vallabha Patel, you have given only one one angle. You, mm -hmm. you are not attached about the replacement of the tribals or the disturbance of the ecosystem. So we expect the balanced view in this. Though it is uh, our... Mm -hmm. Our uh, yes, duty to respect the great leader, but at the same time, we must also be aware of when you are giving yes, uh, a picture of that particular thing <clears throat> from both sides. Uh, coming to the yes. uh, the Sardar Vallabhai Patel's contribution for administration, 
uh, he said that if you want to have united India, then we must need a steel frame that's called all India services. And he has given two principles. One is called the impartiality and incorruptibility. So these are the two principles he has emphasized all the time. When we talk, when we talk about the good governance and ethical governance, so good governance, the principles what you have enunciated are, yes, they're right principles. Uh, when we talk about the ethical governance, ethical governance means you are going to take the welfare of the people. We have to keep that. So equality is very important. At the same time, we got that uh, social justice. Social justice is a principle for the ethical governance, equality for the good governance. So both are important for a country like India. That's why I brought these two principles. Uh, coming to yes. the freedom of press, you said that uh, freedom of press is very nice because you are reading uh, Indian Express. Yes, sir. But, uh, but uh, you see in the index, we, uh, we are at 140 of 180, uh, of the entire press index, and you see the uh, dining basket. So what happened to that? And the arrest of the journalists, the Pegasus issue, <laughs> and the digital media. And they, when you see all these things, so where is the freedom of press? So you have to give a balanced opinion here also. Okay. Yes, uh, coming to this uh, mathematicians, you have said that uh, prior to uh, the, you have divided the two periods. What are the two periods? The so one is. Uh... Uh, before uh, 600, before Mauryan age, and one is after Mauryan age. Mm. What is Ma what is uh, uh, pre Mauryan? Who are the mathematicians before uh, pre Mauryan period? Sir, uh, Baudian, uh, he has contribution to, he, he, he was the first one to write Pythagoras theorem, and Pingala, he was the first one to write uh, Boolean system, so zeros yeah. and ones. Okay, okay. Yes, so sir. normally, what uh, we found is the most, the most important contribution came. Uh, after the Mauryan period. So yes, in the Indus Valley civilization, we get a, without mathematics, we cannot get that type of thing. Right. Uh, even the Yajnas and Yagas, they're also dependent on the mathematical uh, calculations. But mostly yes, we indeed. find the contribution from the uh, the people who are known for the Aryabhatta, Lala, Bhaskara, Brahmagupta, and yes, the Varakamikira. So these are the great uh, mathematicians. Anyway, yes, that's a, a thing. Then coming to the last one called Valsat. So that is also yes, basing sir. on, because we have given on the DEF, I asked this. Sir, just for uh, Sachin Garu, for yes, academic sir. interest, sir. I would like to know why he has mentioned his place of birth as Valsar. Was his father working there or something? Yes, sir. Uh, my uh, father was working in Nasari. Uh, oh. Yeah, I... So he was transferred subsequently after your birth? Yes, sir. He was. Oh, uh, all right. All right. All right. Yes, carry on, carry on. Please carry on. Yeah, this uh, Valsad came from the word called the Vad Sal. Okay. Valsad, the Vad Sal, that is called Banyan trees. Okay. So this is called the British, or they used to call it the Bulsar. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'll keep that, that in is, mind. Yes, yeah. Sir, yeah. So these are a few aspects, Mr. Push. Of course, your knowledge base is very strong and you are highly qualified for uh, the civil services. Thank but you. we want to see from others' perspective. Yes, so that, that's the issue in this particular. Uh, it is to assess your personality, not your knowledge. Knowledge wise, you are very, very strong. But we want to see your attitude and how you can adjust in the uh, bureaucracy. So these are the issues we want to test. And of course, you are coming to that. But a few aspects, if you can uh, uh, adjust and you can see things from both perspectives, then I think that will be a good uh, understanding and they can uh, emerge as a very good uh, uh, bureaucrat. So wish you all the best, Mr. Kush. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, Mr. Kush, I think, uh, as they say, a little bit of Josh is required uh, in uh, answering. Uh, otherwise, I think your uh, awareness and knowledge levels are quite good. Uh, and uh, with the permission of Mr. Satinarana, I'll just add, you know, this freedom of press thing, there is a latest report which says in India during 2020, 228 journalists, including two media houses, 12 female journalists were physically attacked. So the number of cases registered under the UAPA yes, also is very high. Yes, the number of journalists killed in UP alone is 13. 
Okay. So if you look at overall uh, assault on journalists, cases on journalists, you know, it's very high. And uh, Dr. Satyanan has also told you about the global ranking yes, sir. of uh, India. So you uh, compare statistically, this is data from a research report, yes, sir. 2020. So the uh, situation for the press is not very you know, rosy. Yes, you can look into look into it a bit more seriously. Yes, right. Otherwise, you know the interaction we had. A uh, few things, you know, we're quite uh, aware of this uh, bullet train issues, yes, or sir. you know, patent issues, and also the electric vehicles. Uh, only a few things I would like to add is, you said that uh, the bullet train is not uh, very expensive and. Uh, you know, compare it with some road projects and all, and then it can be done. But that's why I asked you, what is the opinion of uh, the Metro man, who is an expert on all these kind of projects? So he said bluntly that it is too expensive. Yes. Sir. So you can look at uh, the cost benefit analysis and all that, and need not jump into a opinion that it is, uh, you know, affordable and all that. So you can take a more balanced view on the cost benefit analysis. Yes. On electric vehicles, I think you are quite uh, uh, abreast of the issues. Yes, the only thing I would like to add is your Motuani connection, so you might not know them. Uh, so the, the entrepreneur, you know, secondary entrepreneur is uh, uh, Sulaja Pirodia Motuani. She started a company as part of the kinetic motor okay. in green energy. Yes. And they are doing very well in uh, three wheel electric vehicles and so on, and then getting into a lot of the mobility areas. Yes. Sir. And uh, uh, finally, on patents, and as you said, you know, the issue is only you can patent and get a patent easily in the US if you have a good uh, uh, no proposal or paper or you know, product. But then what happens is once you patent, you need to maintain it. Yes. The maintenance costs are high. So if you do not uh, have a commercial value, then it becomes a big burden on you to maintain that patent. So you might have protection for 20 years. But uh, if you end up paying a few thousand dollars and don't get anything, yes, so it doesn't make much sense. So just getting a patent might not be very practical. Yes, sir. Okay. So there are certain issues. So you, you can please read up and we abreast with current affairs and uh, yes. wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, yes, Otwani ji, before I allow you to seek clarifications. Yes, sir. Uh, whenever there is a controversial question, yes, sir. you have to present both sides. The meaning is that there are some who are appreciating this or in praise of this, but there are some who are either apprehensive or who have doubts or who are opposing it. For example, in the case of the Central Vista, you did mention about the ecological damage it is likely to do, etc. Yes, so in the case of this bullet train also, what has been one of the critical issues is, will anybody travel by it? Because the cost per head, per ticket, to go from Mumbai to Ahmedabad is a little more than the flight charges to go from Mumbai to Ahmedabad. Yes, sir. So will there be any patronage at all? So that is one of the criticisms. There are many criticisms. There are many people who also uh, say this is an excellent opportunity or uh, what is called the transfer of technology. Yes. The Indian Railways will get to know how to construct bullet train, uh, train railways, and also uh, manufacture bullet trains, etc. So you have to mention both. Yes, sir. Now, now you are free. You can ask any question you like. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I don't have any uh, questions as such. I have uh, two. Uh, I have. I have, uh, I have one doubt. So in uh, sir, uh, this is for Vivek, sir. Uh, Sir, uh, sir, uh, uh, sir, I wanted to ask, I tried to talk about the uh, labor courts on social security, uh, but I think that I was not uh, able to talk about them properly. So how to, uh, uh, 
so in in uh, the question is how to make uh, how to come directly to the should the question is should i come directly to the point uh, or should i try to give uh, yeah you see yeah yeah to answer your question the new social security code bill 2020 also you know tries to align the uh, you know rights the social security rights of yeah. the economy workers yes sir with that of uh, the you know labor who are industrial labor yes sir. they you know uh, they are at the mercy of the employer yes sir. as i said they don't have any rights but only benefits yes sir and even those benefits are also very erratic yes sir you have seen uh, how you know those uh, ola uber people have taken to streets and uh, they started asking for uh, their uh, cut commission in the earnings and all that right yes. so this is uh, the proposed social security bill also tries to align them along with the regular employees uh, regular laborers yes so that is how they would be brought under the uh, new labor code so that they will get a better status as labor yes sir. rather than as gig economy workers uh, who are left to you know their own fate yes okay so that is the kind of uh, security <clears throat> The bill, the bill proposes to give them. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Sir. Yeah, to to come back to yes, sir. Uh, how to answer since you have only twenty five minutes in the actual interview. Yes, sir. You cannot take more than two or three sentences to respond to any question. Okay. You must first listen to the question in its entirety. Yes, sir. Then respond, and while responding. your first sentence should be the most important point yes sir and the remaining points should be in the descending order of importance yes sir and uh, beyond 2 minutes if you take yes, the sir. disadvantage is to you because a person with very wide knowledge would miss an opportunity of uh, enabling the board to know how wide your knowledge is therefore you have to pack your answers your replies your responses with plenty of uh, key phrases and important points yes and concluded by about the second minute if they are interested further they will ask yes sir otherwise they'll go to a new field and yes, that sir. will be of your advantage because you are extremely well informed there is no yes. doubt at all about that Yes, sir. and uh, would you intend shaving, or would you like to leave it as it is? No, sir. I I I will I will uh, shave. I have uh, I don't uh, I have not been I have been a little unwell since the past three days, so that is why I was not able. No, you have one month, thirty-two days still, so you can grow as much beard as you want. But ultimately, when you enter Dolpur <laughs> house, enter with clean shaven because that would uh, make you look very very bright. And since you also worked in the private sector. Yes, sir. A tie would add. Yes, sir. Right. A bit of a glamour. Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else you want to ask? No, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I, just one uh, thing that I I I think, uh, sir, Vivek, sir, sir, uh, sir, uh, sir, you asked about job stamps. Uh, is yeah. that yes, sir? I'm sorry, yeah. sir. I heard job scams. Uh, and scams. I heard, oh, okay, okay. Stop gig economy. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. But the but the discussion was about uh, gig economy. How could it be job scams? <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. No, anyway. Vyapam Vyapam judgment came recently. <laughs> anyway. I hope you know what is Vyapam. Vyapam Vyapam. Yes, yeah. Public Service Commission. Eh? Yes, so fake fellows <laughs> from Bihar and UP have taken the exam. So no, maybe that is a scam. You are. <laughs> uh, no, in this particular instance, perhaps you know technology played villain. I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, ultimately, it is disappointing. You know, Navi Mumbai does not have as much reliable and internet connectivity as it ought to have. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I'm sorry, sir. It is generally better. I don't know. Anyway, it's you beyond you. Different. I'm extremely. Uh, in, in any case, you are a consumer, a customer. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, then all the best. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh,